Bring in another fantastic guest now. We're joined by Natalie Yam, a Swiss Cameroonian businesswoman and activist. Many thanks for your time. It's lovely to see you. How do you like our rooftop studio? Wonderful. Not bad, hey, not bad. Now, Natalie, it seems to me like we're at a crossroads in the world. Big changes are happening, and it's both exciting but also kind of nerve-wracking because it's a change in the world order, it seems, and we've been so used to a unipolar world. How do you feel about BRICS and its expansion and, and how it might be changing the world as we, as we know it? Well, I think it, it brings a lot of, of hope into a more... Um, a more balanced world and into a multipolar world which we have been seeking for a long time so I think there's a lot of expectations mm. um, there's also and you know when there's a lot of expectations there might be some disappointment at some point but as of now I think um, BRICS is the path of the future where we are moving away from an hegemonic uh, um, world order into a more balance where every country is respected regardless of the size, the power or, or the characteristic that it they have. It can't be that easy, can it? To, to change no. everything that we, we know of the world when the, uh, you know, the minority are so used to making decisions for the majority. What are the challenges that we might face on this new road? War. <laughs> starting, starting uh, we, we have wars, we have instability, we have conflicts. Um, we see what's happening in Niger. In, um, it started in the Ukraine. It's continued in, uh, in Niger, where you have kind of a, a Cold War II who is mm -hmm. happening again. You have, um, it's the Tusidid trap, you know. You have this hegemonic power who has doing everything in order to halt a process that is unstoppable. So obviously there are, there, are, there are dangers and threats, but it's something where there's no return. And I think everybody is now aware what type of traps we have to avoid. Not everybody is going to avoid them. Obviously, um, they're going to be, it's going to be violent. Um, there are going to be a lot of sanction, a lot of pressure, especially on weaker African countries in order to force them to not to adhere to a new world order. But uh, I think nowadays African people from heads of state up to the people in the street are really aspiring to more respect, more dignity and more balance in international relationships. And that can't be, we can't go back anywhere. Mm -hmm. And absolutely, and you know, just just on the back of that, one of the key issues that is being discussed, or one of the key items, I should say, is the BRICS creating its own gold-backed currency. What is your ex expectation on that? And do you think this initiative would actually alleviate the continent from being dependent on the West? Well, some part of the continent, certainly. We still have 14 African countries that are dependent, that are... There's, have a currency that is managed by France, that's the West African, the CFA countries. And I hope that seeing that there is an alternative will actually push them to move forward and, and cut the ties that are actually binding them to France and, and keeping them in an economic a monetary slavery that is outdated but I think it's 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 a good we need to go away from the, the dollarization we need to de-dollarize this world we need to take away this weapon that um, that the US are have is having with the dollar you know we, we are talking about the currency that is backed by gold I used to say that the dollar is backed by the military bases that's that's what, the, what is backing up the dollar. And it will be a relief for everybody to go back to a real, uh, a real measure based on gold. Mm. Yeah. You mentioned the Ukraine crisis earlier, yeah. and that's been something that is on the agenda yeah. at the BRICS summit over the next couple of days. The uh, Brazilian leader paid a heavy emphasis, you know, we need peace in Ukraine yeah. because it's affecting everybody. It's having a global impact. Do you expect any progress to be made on that? I'm not sure that we will witness progress uh, on that very shortly because in order to make progress you need to have people that really need, wants to move forward and to go towards peace. And I think some, some of the participants in this Ukraine conflict have not yet gone through all what they, they have decided to disrupt. So I the think the conflict is going to be carried into 2024 at mm -hmm. least, but um, well. 
as you said, when a new world is about to be to be born, it's a it, it might be a difficult birth, mm -hmm. but it will go forward. I encourage the African leaders, the BRICS leader, to to walk toward uh, towards peace. But I think. Um, Everybody, as you know, South Africa did make did, they did take right. a delegation to broker a yeah. peace. Russia was absolutely open to that, yeah, and it was completely rejected by Kiev. Absolutely. But how do you see that impacting the continent of Africa? Because it is the continent that is most impacted by this crisis. It has an impact because, um, let's say, those 14 African countries that are linked to the to the SWIFT system, to the euros, are part of the SWIFT system. You you have money, but you can't buy what you need, even though you have money because the sanction impacts you, despite the fact that you are not part of the conflict, actually. So, but for me, every, every situation bears an opportunity and a threat. And I think the opportunity of this situation is to move, push forward our African leaders from the CFA, Frank, to actually get rid and getting out of the swift system and embracing the new, hopefully, the new system that will be provided for people to, to make trade in local currencies. So it has threats, but it also has opportunities. We all have Thanks. very high hopes. Thank you so much for coming to see us today. Thanks. We really appreciate your time and your insight, of course. We've been talking to Natalie Yam, Cameroonian businesswoman and activist. Thank you. Thank, Thank you very much. Afrique Media, Le Monde, c'est nous.